1899, the Hartford Baseball Club of the Eastern League signed outfielder Louis Francis Sokalexis. He was the first Native American to play professional baseball and the first person of color to play for Hartford. When he arrived in Hartford, Sokalexis was noticeably overweight and battling an alcohol addiction. Also called Sock or Sox, he was once a five-tool outfielder who experienced a meteoric rise and fall during the dead ball era. As a member of the Penobscot tribe, Sock Alexis hailed from Indian Island, Maine. His athletic gifts earned him acceptance to College of the Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts, where he excelled in baseball, football, and track. He then followed his Holy Cross baseball coach and transferred to University of Notre Dame. He played both outfield and pitcher while at Holy Cross and Notre Dame. In a sign of things to come, Sock Alexis was expelled from Notre Dame in his first semester for consuming alcohol. Fortunately for Sock Alexis, Cy Young's Cleveland Spiders signed him to a major league contract on March 9, 1897. Sock Alexis was so popular in Cleveland that fans and reporters later claimed him to be the source of the controversial Indians nickname. In his first big league season, Sock Alexis appeared in 66 games, had a 338 batting average with three home runs, 42 RBI, and 16 stolen bases. On July 1, 1897, he had five base hits in a game against St. Louis. Yet a few days later, he got drunk, jumped from the second story of a brothel, and severely injured his ankle, which would affect his play and reputation. Sock Alexis struggled to regain his old form amid two more seasons in Cleveland. After being arrested for public drunkenness at a theater, Cleveland released him in late May of 1899. A week later, Sock Alexis landed with Hartford. Burdened by alcoholism, he slumped in the Charter Oak City. He hit for a 198 batting average in 91 at-bats. His brief time in Hartford lasted about a month before manager Billy Barney traded him to Bristol of the Connecticut State League. Bristol eventually unloaded Sock Alexis to Waterbury that same year. He ended the season with a 320 batting average. The Waterbury club wanted him back for the following season, but Sock Alexis returned to Maine. A series of news reports detailed his arrest for public drunkenness and the former baseball star was reduced to homelessness and vagrancy. He served intermittent time in jail, but made a comeback in 1902 with Lowell of the New England League. At 30 years old, Sock Alexis hit for a 288 average in his lone season with Lowell. In 1907, Sock Alexis signed his last baseball contract. He appeared with the Bangor Maine Club of the Maine State League. Sock Alexis then found work as a lumberjack and lived at Penobscot Indian Island Reservation. He also piloted a ferry boat on which he enjoyed reading the sporting news and newspapers left behind by passengers. Sock Alexis continued to show interest in baseball, playing on amateur teams, coaching, and umpiring. He eventually stopped drinking to excess, but was not in the best of health. Sock Alexis suffered from attacks of rheumatism and looked older than his age. In the fall of 1913, he joined the logging crew that harvested the northern woods of Maine. While cutting down a pine tree on Christmas Eve of that year, he suffered a heart attack and died at the age of 42. Louis Sock Alexis was buried in St. Anne Church Cemetery on Indian Island, Maine. Today, Sock Alexis is remembered as a pioneering figure. As the first Native American in the major leagues, he blazed a trail amidst widespread prejudice. Fans in various cities hollered racist epithets and made ignorant gestures toward Sock Alexis throughout his career. Like Charles Bender, Jim Thorpe, and Jackie Robinson, Sock Alexis endured cruel discrimination while playing the game he loved. Though alcoholism did him in, Louis Sock Alexis prevailed over racial attitudes of the time and momentarily achieved baseball greatness.